Well, hey there, you're on the internet, I have some free time, and welcome to the Triple N Network, where all you newbie nib nerds can find all the news you'll need. Let's look at an ink today, shall we? Now, today's ink I got from my wonderful, mysterious penefactor, so it's not in that fancy Ackerman bottle, but it's Ackerman number 29, it's a gray. Now, everyone, brace your ears, because I'm going to completely murder this. Hofjusbergris. Which means Hofvigisberg Gray. I don't know what Hofvigisberg is, but uh, yeah. There. So obviously this is not the bottle it usually comes in, but uh, thought maybe I'd try and show it to you in the bottle. This is probably the most genuine gray, like straight gray, that I have yet to encounter, uh, which I will try and demonstrate by showing you this. So here's. Hofjusbergray, which for now I'm just going to call number 29, to spare all of our ears. <laughs> uh, you see how that's just a straight gray? Like, here is graphite, and you can see how it sort of leans towards, like, a, it's got some green in it, right? This really doesn't have that. And Lexington, it has, it, I don't know how to describe it, but it has something else in it. It's pretty close. There's something else in it. And then this is Monteverde Blue Black, which is actually kind of a gray and a very th I hate that ink. Anyways, uh, it's a very gray-gray. All of the tests were done in these two Hero 616s, one with a pretty darn fine standard nib, and one with a pretty darn broadened, wetened nib that I did. Uh, here's the chromatography, and here's how you're supposed to do it. And here you can see where that initial drop of ink was. It sort of, sort of goes up into sort of a gray, gray, and more gray. And here I let it dry. And you can definitely see that initial spot much more clearly. So, it makes me think that there's at least a touch of water resistance. Paper test, top down to density, Clairefontaine, 90 grams per square meter. It's nice, right? It's a nice gray. It's, it's such a... Straightforward gray. It doesn't lean towards, you know, like purple or green. It's not a weak black at all. This is probably the most genuine gray I've ever seen. Now, the fairly fine nib uh, did, uh, or I'd say it's pretty darn fine nib, it took seven seconds to dry it, but the broad and wet still only took 12, and this is fairly hydrophobic paper. As you can see, there's a good bit of shading in here, and I know I'm not going to get it on camera, but you look up there, oh, I'm not going to get it, there is just like the barest little hint of sheen. I say that it's not there, but I, I noticed it before I started turning the camera on. It's a gray, no, okay, so it's like a black-red sort of metallic-y sheen, and we'll see more of it later, but anyway, I just wanted to say that it does show up here. Now, it did dye the page, it did wash a good bit of it off, but if you look, that's still very clear, very there. You could recover that. Now, there's no bleed, no feather, no spread. It's not a super dark ink, so there's really not a lot of echo. So, all things considered, I'd say it's pretty good. Oh, but here I say, I think it's like a 6, maybe 6.5 out of 10 wetness. No, I'd say it's definitely a 6.5, maybe a 7. This is a pretty wet ink. It's not, you know, it's not like vomiting out of the pen, but it is noticeably wet in my experience, so... Next is Rhodia, 80 grams per square meter, where I feel like, again, you can see some of that really nice shading. Uh, the pretty darn fine nib was 7 seconds, the broader, wetter nib was 12, which, again, Rhodia is still pretty hydrophobic paper and pretty dense, and so those dry times, all things considered, really not bad. Maybe here I'll be able to, oh, you, you can you see that in the scrubby? There's sort of like a dark, reddish, black, shiny bit in there. It shows up in the words too, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be able to get it. But where it's laid on really thick, you do get a bit of that sheeny shine thing. But yeah, uh yeah, still noticeably wet. No bleed, no feather, no spread. So there's very mild echo, which I couldn't really explain. But yeah, I mean, I would be totally fine with that, and I'm pretty sensitive to that stuff, so eh. But yeah, again, water test, really not bad. Uh, if you had to, you could definitely recover that. It did wash away a good bit. It did get lighter, 
It did sort of feather, but you could recover that. Next is Tome Away River Paper, where I feel like here you will definitely, oh yeah, there it is. See that sort of like red black sheen in there? And it's in, it's in some of the words too, but yeah. Anyways, the pretty darn fine nib was eight seconds. The broader, wetter nib was 19. You can see just how wet that was. You have really nice shading, but it's mostly more of a halo, just because of how this ink, or this paper makes ink pool. It gives it a nice sort of a halo look. It's, a, it's such a nice, straightforward gray. Really enjoying it. Now, this isn't too bad for Tumbleway River. When you add more water, it loves to just let the ink like slide away. But here, now it's still very clear, very there. It did dye the page. But if you had to recover that, you definitely could. That's very clear. No bleed feather spread. This is very thin paper though, so echo to taste. Now, I tested both pens on just awful 20 pound copier paper, and the results could have been a heck of a lot worse. Uh, the fine took two and a half seconds to dry, the broader one took four. I would have expected a lot more bleed from such a broad wet nib. I mean, this is the world's worst copier paper, so this actually did pretty darn well. There is some spread. It, it's kind of like a, an intense wooliness that in places bleeds over to feathering. There's no shading left. This paper absolutely hates water, so it usually does really weird things, but here that's pretty clear, pretty there. It didn't feather or explode too much, so you definitely could recover that. And on the fine nib, again, you really... I mean, there's, like here, in, again, you can sort of see through the paper, but in spots where it, it just sort of almost makes itself known. But again, there's really, I say there's still some feathers, but again, it's mostly just an intense wooliness. Uh, yeah, there's some spread, but it's not obscene. So the fact that it did this well on this paper, I'm quite impressed, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> not bad, not bad. Yeah. Mm. Again, I've tested both on the mead paper. So the fine nib took three seconds to dry. The uh, broader one took four. But again, I would have expected much worse behavior. Uh, granted, of course, the broader nib behaved much more poorly. As you can see, there is some near bleed through in spots and some intense echo in others. Uh, there is some sort of feathery uh, again, it's sort of more of an intense wooliness. There's no shading, but could have been a lot worse. Again, water test, really not bad. You know, it, I mean, it kind of, kind of feathered a little over here, but not much. Didn't dye the page too much, didn't explode. You could definitely cover that. Here's the fine nib. Again, really not bad. I mean, if you look, there's, I mean, a bit of spread, a wooliness more than a feathering. I'm impressed. But yeah, again, didn't explode, didn't feather, did fairly well there. And here is accurate, modern moleskin notebook paper. Finally, right guys? Anyways, again, tested both. And as expected, here in the broader wetter nib, it absolutely ruined it. Look at that. Oh, look at all that feathering. Look at that. Ugh. It looks like it's coming up. It looks like you, like it's breaking it down to the pulp. You see? And still six seconds dry. Even on paper, this this absorbent. Ugh, no shading left. Water test is a disaster. Bam. Look at all that bleed. Now, here's the fine. It did better, but on a scale of bad, I mean, it's still pretty bad. I mean, you can still sort of like see the pulpy bits in the paper. It's got a good bit of feathering. It's a good bit of spread. And still, five seconds to dry. It, it was really not great. And again, the water test was an absolute disaster. A lot of it washed out. And what didn't exploded and feathered and just made a mess. And look, this is a very fine nib. And look at how much of that bled through. Now, there's moleskin for you, because mead, cheapest paper in the world, almost didn't get through almost didn't get through at all ever. I mean you got some intense echo, that's it. World's worst copier paper, right? 
Ta-da, it's fine. God, I hate this paper. Anyways, I'm calm now. For your consideration from the Triple N Network. Yeah, that's not the ink. Anyways, uh, Ackerman number 29, Hoffitus für Grüß. Oh, sorry, I should have warned you. Anyways, uh, I liked it. It was such a gray gray, and with the exception of moleskin paper, it actually did fairly well on the cheaper papers. Uh, very well behaved, looks great. Yeah. For your consideration from the Triple N Network, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching. Bye.